Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. I've been making videos on this channel for over 4 years now, I've covered tons and tons of topics in over 600 videos. One thing that I made sure to always do since the very beginning is read through all the comments every single day and answer as many questions as I can. I've probably answered thousands of questions. Usually I reply directly to the person, but if at least one person has a question then chances are there's more people wondering the same thing. So here let's see some interesting questions that I answer that maybe you'd also like to know the answer to. I've already done a bunch of these videos, check out the entire playlist, see some more questions. Hopefully you'll learn quite a lot by seeing what others are asking. Ok, so starting off with a question posted on my last QA video. Here is Daz Meffin who asks, basically is the code in the tutorials performant? And alternatively, do I recommend focusing on performance or not? So the answer to this is that tutorials are mainly just starting points. They teach you how to learn one thing and how to do that thing. So for the most part, any tutorial you find is not going to be perfect production ready code. But a more important question is, does that matter? So should you focus on improving performance or not? And the answer to that question is usually probably not. There's a fun saying which goes, premature optimization is root of all evil, because you can easily get stuck trying to improve performance of some kind of system when really you should be spending that time just building your game. Just think, is it a better use of your time to add some enemies and maybe some building mechanics to your game, or should you use that time to improve your inventory code to go from something like 0.5 milliseconds to 0.1? Technically that would be a 5x performance improvement, but is that really worth it? Most of the times the answer is no, that is not worth it. Most of the times tutorial code is performant enough for your needs. However, with that said, at the same time that does not mean that you should intentionally write horrible code. You might be aware of the concept of technical debt, which is what you get when you try to do things quick and dirty, which you will then have to clean up sometime in the future. The ideal goal is you keep improving your programming skills, and specifically your clean code skills, so that the first code you write, while it might not be the absolute most performed code possible, it is also not completely horrible. It is good enough to do the job and not cause problems to any other system. So specifically with regards to watching and following tutorials, usually a tutorial is focused on achieving a certain goal or building a certain mechanic, it is intended to teach you how to do that, but is usually not intended to be super high performed production ready code. Perhaps tutorial code is more than fast enough for your use case, or perhaps it might require extra work to fit your performance budget. So in general, don't worry too much about performance unless it is bad enough that it hurts your development process. And then, randomly at various points in development, use the profiler to check out hotspots in your game. Make sure you measure the actual performance and use that to decide if it's worth your time trying to improve performance, or instead spend that time working on other mechanics and polish. Next up, here is a really extremely interesting comment. It is posted on the video where I made a really nice top down shooter in 7 days. The video was quite a long time ago but I'm still happy with how the game looks. The game involved tons of systems working together with one another. There was quite a nice amount of complexity which means writing good clean code was definitely a priority. And this one is not so much a question but rather a comment. It comes from Klaus who talks about how as a beginner watching my tutorials was complicated and annoying. It looks like the code that I write is needlessly complex which can definitely look quite a bit daunting to a beginner. But Klaus says that after coming back with some more knowledge, now the code in tutorials makes a lot more sense. This one is a really tricky topic with regards to teaching. One easy example is variable access, I even made a dedicated video on this topic. For a beginner, the obvious simple way is just make the variable public. That's it, just one line of code, super simple, very easy to understand. Whereas if a beginner watches one of my videos and they see that I'm using some weird syntax with some square brackets for something called a serialized field and then making it private with some functions to expose it, for a beginner that might all seem unnecessarily convoluted and complex, like why on earth wouldn't I just make it public? Same thing for pretty much every clean code concept. In my videos when I want to update some UI, I normally do it through some kind of event. Again, a beginner might ask, why on earth are you doing these weird things called events instead of just calling a function directly or updating the UI object directly from the logic code? Writing good clean code is one of those things that is absolutely essential, but extremely difficult to communicate the importance to a beginner. No matter how much I try to explain, for most people they really have to suffer through the consequences before they understand the importance and the benefits of writing good clean code. Again this is all part of the regular learning process, I myself am no different. I also used to just make everything public, call functions from everywhere, use strings all over the place. And as complexity of my games went up, so did the difficulty of actually building them. I soon realized the problems with having systems be tightly coupled with one another. I had lots and lots of errors because of using strings for states. Many times I wasted lots of energy trying to fix bugs before realizing it was just a string with an extra invisible space. So my advice to you if you are a beginner is if you're watching a tutorial and the instructor is doing things the way you think is wrong, consider that perhaps it's not wrong. 
perhaps it's your lack of experience making you blind to some potential issues that the instructor already went through. But like I said, it's really hard for a beginner to learn that even if I tell you directly. So if you do end up doing what everyone does and ignore this advice until it blows up in your face, when that happens, don't be too harsh on yourself. Remember that everyone, myself and every instructor included, everyone goes through the same thing. So just keep at it, keep on learning and do what you can to minimize the painful experiences you have to go through in your learning journey. The next question was posted on my hex grid system tutorial video. Here Luca asks how it's possible to dive into new topics and get to know everything in such a short amount of time. Why is it that I can learn something super quickly while well, for a lot of people it would take them hours or even days diving into the documentation to fully understand how something works. My answer to that is there's really no secret, the only secret is really just experience, that's pretty much it. I know that might sound like a overly simple answer, but it really is the truth, there is no special secret. The more code you write, the more systems you build, the more games you make, the easier it becomes to build something new. Or in this case, to learn something new. After you have created dozens of unique systems and a handful of unique games, then you've probably already experienced a ton of unique scenarios. So when you go to learn something new, it probably isn't all new. It's a mix of things you've done previously and a tiny amount of new things. For example, for this video making a hex grid, I already knew how to make a grid system, so all I really needed was some math to convert it from a square grid system onto a hex grid. Even though I'm not very good at math, I have done enough things in the past that I can figure it out. I've already gone through the painful process of learning the basics of kind of like vectors, rotations, dot product and so on, so I didn't have to learn all of that right now for the very first time. So building this hex grid system really wasn't something that was completely 100% new. Many things are similar to things that I have done in the past. Same thing for more different topics, like for example the Netcode for game Objects video. It's a completely new toolset that I had not touched before, but I have made multiplayer games in the past. So even though I did not know the syntax for Netcode for game Objects, I was already familiar with the core concepts behind multiplayer games. Things like what is a packet, what is a connection, what is bandwidth, what are potential issues with NAT and firewalls. All of those concepts were already stored in my brain. When I went to read the Netcode for game Objects documentation, my brain simply remembered all those things. So even though the toolset and the syntax were completely new, there was a lot of familiarity which allowed me to learn how to make that and build that one hour video in pretty much just a handful of days. So I wish this was something that I could actually teach. I wish I could teach you how to learn new things quickly because it is a very useful skill set to have, but really the only way is experience. So my advice to you is keep building things, keep making prototypes, keep writing code. Every line of code you write makes the next one easier. And of course, explore lots of topics. In terms of gaining knowledge and experience, it really helps to build, say, 10 games in 10 different genres, rather than 10 games that all have pretty much the same mechanics. For me, something that really helped is what I covered in my Game Dev Journey video, how I got started making Flash games, and Flash games were all about making something interesting and make it super quickly. Back then, no one was working years on Flash games. Most devs would work maybe weeks, or at the most extreme, maybe months, and the final game was not supposed to have dozens of hours of content, just a few minutes of good gameplay was more than enough. So thanks to that, in the 5 years that I was making flash games, I built something like 40 games. I did everything from top-down shooters to management games, RPGs, racing strategy and so on. I really think that massively helped me kickstart my own knowledge base in quite a big way. And if you want to know specifically how I learned things, like I said, there's no secret. For example, I recently made a really detailed video on Unity Dots. I managed to learn the new version and make the video in about 3 days. First thing I do is look in the documentation. So I opened up the entities package and read through most of it. Then in this case there is a really useful dots guide which I found in the forums, so again read through the whole thing. Then I also read a bunch of posts in the forums, specifically the pin posts. As you can guess from the fact that I have a video tutorial channel, I also like to learn by watching video tutorials. So I searched YouTube and found an excellent really detailed guide by TurboMix Games. As well as some very useful videos from Win Games. I watched everything that I could. By the way, a quick tip for learning things quickly. Learn how to listen and understand on a faster speed. Personally, for me, I watch every YouTube video on either 2x or 3x speed. So for example, Johnny's Dots tutorial, it's two and a half hours long. I watched it at mostly 2.5 speed. So I managed to watch and understand the whole thing in just about an hour. And then of course, after consuming all that content, the next very important step is to try it out for yourself. So I opened up a Unity project and started writing some code, tried making a component, a system. I explored the differences between system base and I system. I spent a bunch of time experimenting with making my own aspect, learning about all the things you can and cannot do within them, and in my case another excellent thing that really helps my learning process is this very channel. If you ever want to truly learn something, try to teach it to someone. When you try to teach it, it forces you to really learn the content. So for me, making video tutorials is an excellent way to help my own learning process. 
If you want, maybe try doing that yourself. Maybe make a tutorial video on some topic, or perhaps just try to present something and teach your friends. All right, so those are a bunch more of your questions and my answers to them. I hope you'll learn something new. Check out the entire playlist to see some more interesting questions. I've already answered thousands of questions, so stay tuned for more videos like this so you can learn from what others have asked. All right, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.